Well, folks, it's already the final day of Special Projects Pack number nine. It's flown by again. This time, of course, the penultimate build for the Subaru S207 version of the WRX. This is, as you would expect, a faster, more hardcore version. We've had stuff like this in the past before. Forza, even, in the older games had, I think it was the S204, I believe it was, with the Kidney Grill. And, of course, in Gran Turismo, more recently, we had the Nürburgring package. So it's that similar kind of vibe. A bit rarer, a bit faster, a bit more powerful, of course. In terms of the build, and of course I'll, I've already put on screen that you can grab this particular player's design by clicking the link down below. A few different people have done it, but this one, I like what they've done with it. It looks good. As far as the upgrades, it's a fairly simple one, as you can see. So 527 points, 324 horsepower, 1510 kilos. Now, as far as the actual bits and bobs, we've got the sports computer, the sports filter, the sports pads. As far as the tires, I've left it on the sports hards that it's already got. As far as the club sports section, we've got the clutch and flywheel, the discs, the... Oh, I should go back actually to the ballast there as well. As far as the semi-racing stuff, we have the fully customised diff, the height adjustable sports suspension. As far as the racing parts, we've got the... Actually, no, I thought we had the torque vectoring centre diff, but I actually haven't fitted that on this one. You do have a bit of torque vectoring anyway, which is why I think I had a bit of a, a false memory of that. So you don't necessarily need that because the car can do it anyway. As far as the extreme stuff, you could go for the steering angle. I actually haven't bothered to do it on this one. There's nothing necessarily wrong with doing it, though, and it is pretty cheap. So you could give that a try and always just take it off if you don't want to use it. And as far as the ultimate section, there's nothing there either. So like I said, pretty damn easy. It's a very, very simple build, not a particularly expensive one either. So, of course, to jump back into the garage and show you what I've done. Again, of all the builds, kind of like the Nismo 340R that I did, kind of like the Megane, this isn't worlds apart. It's just a, a slight improvement, a slight upgrade, much as it is in real life. Of course, it's quicker, more powerful, but... It's not like it's going from a base model to a top of the line. It's an already fast car becoming even quicker. So as far as the actual settings, we've got the ride height on 130 for the front, 133 for the rear. So seems a bit higher on the back. It actually more like levels it out. It doesn't really look as crazy as you might think. It's it's no snowplow, that's for sure. We've got one, which of course is fixed on the anti-roll, 35 and 45 for the compression and rebound on the dampers, 2.05 for the springs themselves. As far as the camber, a little bit, one degree, and likewise again with the height adjustable sports suspension, you cannot change the toe. As far as the diff, we've got triple 60 and then triple five for the rear. Might seem a bit odd, give it a try and see what you think. As far as that torque split, as I said, if you do, as I recall, put the full torque vectoring diff that I spoke about earlier on, I think it just allows you, if I remember correctly, to take that more so towards the rear which of course is not applicable to this because we've got it on a 50-50 split anyway. As far as the transmission, of course that's standard. The power restrictor and the ECU are not limited. We've got a little bit of ballast and of course multiple sources will give you multiple weights and power and all kinds of stuff online. So there's no 100% guarantee that this is the accurate weight of the car, but 15, 10 kilos is what I could find. So just a little bit added, 20 kilos, and then I've just slapped that all the way to the rear. It's still a 60-40 split, so, uh, split though, so it's not like it's making that much of a difference. As far as the downforce, I've actually evened them out. So 90 front, 90 rear. That means that in comparison, though, it's a lot higher in terms of the top-end capabilities of what you can do on the front and the back. On the rear, that's as low as it can go, but for the front, that's as high, or almost as high as it can go. Again, you don't have to do that. Give it a try, see what you think. And as far as the parts over here, pretty simple. You can see everything we already did. So like I said, it, it's a very simple build. So all that remains is, of course, to jump out to the track and show you what it can do in practice. Now, this one, I will say, is not as extreme as perhaps the, I don't know, Mitsubishi FQ440, for example, build that I did. That one was very quick. Pretty popular design as well for such a simple looking car. This one isn't going to be as rapid as that one, but it certainly isn't slow. It is a quick car. I don't recall how the lap time compares to the Mugen Double R that I did last time around. I don't think this was quite as quick, if memory serves, but I'm not sure because obviously the four wheel drive has advantages and disadvantages because the advantage is you've got grip all the time or at least 99% of the time. Whereas with a front-wheel drive car like that Mugen, it's such a well-set-up front-wheel drive chassis that even a four-wheel drive car will struggle. 
to keep up with a front-wheel drive chassis when it's set up and tuned, and when it's as good as Honda already built that car to begin with. So that's a brilliant example. Taking this car up against most other front-wheel drive cars or rear-wheel drive, it's going to stand a pretty good chance. Even though it doesn't have anywhere near the kind of horsepower of an FQ400 or an FQ440, it is no slouch. So for the Subaru fan who likes something a bit special, of course I've done a couple of other special Subarus before, like the Litchfield Type 25 as well. So of course if you're a Subaru fan, check that one out. Check this one out and give it a try. I hope of course you enjoy it. And like I said, there's only one build left. So stick around for that one later on today. Of course, if you're new to this and haven't checked out the others in the week or any of the other special projects packs, then obviously check those out and I'll see you next time. But for now, thanks for watching.